day class. Thank you for attending the lecture. This would be our last module for the midterm. Your module 6, which will tackle your immunoglobulins. Now, immunoglobulins class take, take note are the end product when B lymphocytes are stimulated by antigen and undergo differentiation. If you still remember class in your bone marrow, in your bone marrow, small lymphocytes would become your B cells. They would mature or they would differentiate to become B cells. The B cells would go to the circulation. And from the circulation, they would go to the secondary lymphoid organ, such as your lymph nodes and your spleen. And if they encounter an antigen, they would become activated. And when they become activated, they would either become a plasma cell or a uh, memory cell. If it becomes a plasma cell class, it would start creating your immunoglobulins or your antibodies. So let me repeat, your antibodies or immunoglobulins are the end product when B lymphocytes are stimulated by antigen and undergo differentiation. So in the bone marrow class, the small lymphocytes would mature to become B cells. B cells would go to the circulation and would go to the secondary lymphoid organs, such as the lymph nodes and the spleen, where if they encounter an antigen, they would become activated becoming either a plasma cell or a memory cell. If they, come, if they become a plasma cell, they would start secreting antibodies. Now, immunoglobulins class are also known as your antibodies. Immunoglobulins are glycoproteins class. Please take note of their uh, characteristic. They are glycoproteins found in the serum portion of the blood and would constitute approximately 20% of plasma proteins in healthy individuals. So they are 20% of plasma proteins. If you still remember in your clinical chem, but there are different types of proteins. They have albumin, fibrinogen, the alpha-1 uh, globulins. I forgot the other, but if, if you would... Uh, separate them via electrophoresis they would have different uh, fractions makikita mo yung class iba-iba yung mga peaks nila so those are your plasma proteins and your immunoglobulins are 20% now all immunoglobulins class are composed of 86% to 98% polypeptide and 2% to 14% carbohydrate so please take note of their composition. They are made up of 86 to 98% polypeptide and 2 to 14% carbohydrates. Now many antibodies can be isolated in the gamma globulin fraction of protein by electrophoresis separation. So this is what I mentioned in the previous slide that your uh, antibodies are specifically plasma proteins. And they belong to the gamma globulin fraction. And through electrophoresis class, they could be separated. Now, they can be found in blood plasma and in many body fluids, such as your tears, saliva, and colostrum. So, please take note, class, that they are not only found, hindi lang sila nakikita, they are not only found in the plasma, but they can also be found in body fluids, such as your tears, saliva, and colostrum. Now, there are five major classes on the basis of the part of the molecule. They are of the heavy chain, called your IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, and Ig. So they are divided into five major classes, class, namely your IgG. Yeah, the, the letters Ig here is the shortcut. Yan yung shortcut for immunoglobulin. That is the shortcut for immunoglobulin. Now, the G here would stand for gamma. 
the M here would stand for the mu, the A would stand for alpha, D would stand for delta, and the E would stand for epsilon. So you have your immunoglobulin gamma, in immunoglobulin mu, immunoglobulin alpha, immunoglobulin delta, and immunoglobulin epsilon. So those are the five major classes, and they are base class on the part of the heavy chain. So later I will discuss them. Now they have different function class. The first one is that they are the main numeral element of the adaptive immune response. They are essential role in antigen recognition and in biological activities related to immune response such as opsonization and complement activation. So do remember the functions class. Main numeral element, antigen recognition, uh, biological activities, the immune response, obscenization, and even complement activation. Now, the structure class of your immunoglobulin was first discovered in 1950s and 60s by Gerald Edelman and Rodney Port. Now, they are made up of a basic four chain. Now, when you say four chain, if you still remember in our module one, uh, they are made up of two light and two Heavy chain. So, two light chain to heavy chain. Naalala nyo pa, ito yung heavy chain nyo. While the light chain would be this one. So, this is the light chain. So, they're made up of two heavy chain. One, two, and two light chains as well. A total of four chains class. And they are a tetrapeptide unit. When you say tetrapeptide, they are divided into four segments. So, kada chain nyo may four segments. So, uh, para mas madali nyo maintindihan ito. They are a tetrapeptide class. When you say tetrapeptide, they are, they are composed of four peptide segments. So, one, two, three, four. So, ito yung heavy chain. The heavy chain is made up of four tetrapeptide chains. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your light chain also is composed of a tetrapeptide. One, two, three, and four. So, do take note of that. Now, they would consist of a large chain known as your heavy or H chain and two smaller chains called your light or L chains. Now, each chain class has a variable region and a constant region. So, take note of this. Bawat chain daw would have a variable and constant region. So, balik tayo dito sa picture na to. Remember class, itong kulay blue, itong dark blue. This is the heavy chain. While the the silver one, that is the light chain. Now, sabi doon, they are consists of a constant region and a variable region. Now, take note that class that for each chain, merong constant, merong variable. Now, si heavy chain class is made up of three. Heavy chain is made up of three constant regions. So, bilangin natin. Constant heavy one. Constant heavy two. Constant heavy 3. Bilangin ulit natin. Dito sa other side, constant heavy 1. Constant heavy 2. Constant heavy 3. And they are made up of one variable region. And saan itong variable region na to? Dito siya. This is your variable region or variable heavy chain. Variable heavy chain. So, pag tinanong kayo, class, what is, the, what is the composition or how many uh, constant regions does your heavy chain contain? The answer is 3. Pag tinanong kayo, how many variable regions does your heavy chain have? It is consists of one variable. 
while your light chain naman class, as mentioned, also has a constant and variable region. Si light chain nyo class only has one constant region and one variable region. So for you to understand that, ito siya. This is the this is the light chain, itong silver na to. This is the what the constant region. So isang constant region lang class. And the variable would be this one. One variable region. So pag tinanong kayo sa quiz o sa exam, how many constant regions does your variable light does your light chain have? The answer is one. Pag tinanong sa exam, how many variable regions does your light chain have? The answer is also one. Okay, so ulitin ko para mas maintindihan nyo. As mentioned in the previous slide class, each chain would have a constant region and a variable region. Now for the heavy chain class, the constant region is 3. The variable region is 1. So saan yung mga constant region niya? This is your constant heavy 1, constant heavy 2, and constant heavy 3. Same with the other chain. Ito rin yung constant heavy 1, constant heavy 2, and constant heavy 3. Then it has a single variable region. Saan yung variable region niya? Ito. This is the variable region. Yung dulo class. For the light chain naman, for the light chain, it has also a constant region and a variable region. The difference is that it only has a one or a single constant region. So saan yung constant region niya? Ito yung light chain mo, yung silver. It has a single constant region and a single variable region. So I hope that was clear. Now chains are held together by non-covalent forces and disulfide interchain bridges. So itong, itong mga chains nyo class, ito, Connected siya by disulfide bonds. Disulfide bonds. And if you take a look at your immunoglobulin structure, you would see that there are different regions and different areas. Diba sabi ko dati, ang antibodies nyo are made up of a fab and an FC region. So, ang FAB region nyo is this one. Your FAB region class is composed of two heavy chain and two light chain. So, ito yun. One, two. Tapos, they are composed of constant heavy one constant heavy 1, and variable heavy, variable heavy. They are also composed of your constant light 1, ibang color para mas maganda. Constant. This is your constant light 1, constant light 1, Cons, uh, variable light. Variable light. So, pag tinanong kayo, class, what is the composition of your fab region, it's made up of, com of constant heavy 1 chain, a variable heavy, a constant light chain, and a variable light chain. Yun ang composition. So, let me repeat. Pag tinanong kayo sa quiz or sa exam, what is the composition of your fab region, Constant heavy 1, variable heavy, constant light 1, and variable light chain. Constant light chain, variable light chain. Well, the FC region naman class is made up of the following. Ang FC region nyo naman is this one, itong buong to. It is made up of your constant heavy 2, constant 
heavy 2. Constant heavy 2, constant heavy 3. So, compose of constant 2 region, constant 3 region. So, pag tinanong kayo, what is the composition of your FC region? It is your constant heavy 2 and constant heavy 3. So, I hope that was clear. Let's continue. Now, um, there were certain scientists class who use enzymes. Gumamit sila ng enzymes class. They use enzymes and you will tackle this in your CC2. But enzymes class are basically catalysts. When you say catalyst, they speed up reactions. So one known enzyme that was used for immunoglobulin was papain. Now, papain was used by Rodney Porter. So, ginawa ni Rodney Porter, he used papain and he digested. He digested the immunoglobulin. When you say digested, cleaved niya yan. And when he cleaved it, it formed the so-called FC fragment. The FC fragment class is also known as your fragment crystallizable. Let me repeat, FC fragment would refer to fragment crystallizable. This was created with the use of the enzyme papain done by Rodney Porter. Now, the FC fragment, if, you, if you're aware, ito yan. This is the FC fragment. It has no antigen binding ability and is now known to represent the carboxyl terminal halves of two heavy chains. So, if you still remember, Ang FC region yung is again made up of constant heavy 2 and constant heavy 3. Two hubs of the carboxyl terminal that are held together by disulfide bonding. Including, it has the function of opsonization and complement fixation. Now, another fragment that was formed here was the fag, FAB fragment. This is the fragment antigen binding. So, yan yung meaning ng FAB, FAB class. Fragment antigen binding. They have antigen binding capacity. For the FC, the FC would stand for fragment crystallizable. So, pag tinanong kayo anong purpose ng FC nyo, opsonization and complement fixation. In the activation of fixation plus as well. Then the FAB would have the antigen binding capacity. Now, another scientist, si Alfred Nisonov, this time used the enzyme. Gumamit din siya ng enzyme plus. The enzyme he used this time was pepsin. He cleaved IgG at the carboxyl terminal side of the interchain disulfide bond. So, cleaved niya to dito. Dito siya nag plus. And it formed two fragments. So, gumamit ng pepsin, nag siya at the terminal side of the interchain of the disulfide bonds. And it later formed two fragments as well. Yung F, parenthesis AB, comma, 2, or your FAB2. Please take note of the, ano klasa, the proper writing. F, parenthesis AB, comma, Parenthesis 2. But let's just call it FAB2. Now, this is a molecular weight of 100,000 Daltons and all the antigen binding ability. So, same lang din ang purpose niya. It has the antigen binding ability. And the other fragment that was formed was your FC, comma. FC, comma class. Now, this is similar to your fragment crystallizable except that it is disintegrated into very several smaller pieces. So, yun yung difference. Di ba yung difference yung FC nyo? Ganyan. This is the FC region. But yung FC comma nyo, they are disintegrated into smaller pieces. So, ayan, nagkaroon ng mga smaller pieces yung and that was used by Nisonov using the enzyme Pepsi. It produces these two fragments. 
So do take note class of the difference sa papain sa kasa pepsin. Iba-iba yung fragments sa na pro-produce depending on the enzyme. Now let's talk about your light chains class. So your light chains class, there are two types of light chains. Your kappa and your lambda. And as mentioned earlier, they would have a constant and variable region. The constant region is the carboxyl terminal. Now, tingnan nyo itong picture na to. The red one here, itong pink saka red, these are the light chains. Dito lang tayo mag-focus. The constant region is found in the carboxyl terminal. So, ito yung carboxyl terminal. This is the shortcut for carboxyl, yung OOC na yun. The constant region is here. So, this is your constant light. And yung variable region would have the amino terminal end. So, amino would be H3N. This is the amino. This is where you would find your variable light region. So, pakitandaan yung class ha. Pag tinanong kayo where do you find the constant region of your uh, light chains, it's at the carboxy terminal kapag variable naman found in the amino terminal. So, name because your amino sequence would vary among antibodies by different B cell groups. Then, heavy chains naman class. Now, same with light chains which has a variable and constant region. The difference lang class mas madami tong constant region. Tatlo. Now, constant regions are unique to each class. IgG would have the gamma H chain. IgM would have the mu heavy chain. IgA would have the alpha heavy chain. IgD would have the delta heavy chain. IgE would have the epsilon heavy chain. So if you take a look at, at 12 class, ito yung heavy chain, yun yung kulay blue. The, uh, the constant regions would also be found in the carboxyl. And the variable would also be found in the amino terminal. Ito yung disulfide bond that helps that attaches them together. Now, there are different variations or uh, classifications or changes ng antibodies. Nyo. The first one is your isotype. Now, when you say isotype, the H chain that is unique to each immunoglobulin class. Meaning class, kapag isotype, it is the heavy chain that is changing. Nagbabago. So, the isotype is the heavy chain that is changing. And this is due to the five classes. So, ang nagbabago class itong mga to. This one, your constant heavy 1, constant heavy 2, constant heavy 3, constant heavy 1, constant heavy 2, and constant heavy 2. So, yung heavy chain nyo yung nagbabago. If it is IgG, as mentioned earlier, it would become your uh, heavy, gamma heavy chain. Gamma heavy chain. If it's IgA, it would become alpha heavy chain. Pag allotype naman class, the genetic variations in the constant region. So, take note of this. Genetic variation class, meaning it is the genes that would vary. Hindi yung structure. Ha? Kasi sa isotype, structure yung nagbabago. But for the allotype, please take note is that it is the genes that would vary. Kaya, pag tiningnan mo, this is the constant heavy 1, constant heavy 2, constant heavy 3. There is a line here. This signifies that there is a change in their genetic variation. And this is only unique sa constant regions class. Ha! Genetic variations in the constant region. So, pati yung light chain kasali din. To take note of that. Then, kapag idiotype naman class, this would refer to variations in the variable region. Giving individual antibody molecular specificity. So, kapag idiotype naman class, structure ng variable region. Ito. Ito yung heavy variable and yung light variable. So, may mga changes dito. Allowing molecular specificity. So, they would 
change depending on the type of antigen. Specific lang sila dun sa target antigen nila. So ulitin ko class ha, kapag isotype, heavy chain structure yung nagbabago. This is due to having each uh, unique immunoglobulin class. Kapag allotype naman, genetic variation ng constant region. So both light and heavy na constant regions yung affected. Kapag idiotype naman class, it is the structure of the variable region. Both heavy and light are affected. I hope that was clear. Now let's talk about the hinge region class. Now the hinge region class is found or is the segment of H chain located between your constant heavy 1 and constant heavy 2. So naalala nyo pa dito yung constant heavy 1. Dito yung constant heavy 2. So they are located between. So pagitan. So ito siya. This is your hinge region. Now your hinge region class has high proline content. Ano ba yung proline? Di ba? This is an amino acid class. It has high proline content which would allow for its flexibility. Kaya yung hinge region na yan, it allows your Fab region. Ito yung Fab region. Eh. To move sideways, pwede yung bumababa, pwede yung tumaas class, depending on ano, allowing flexibility. The reason for that is meron kasi siyang proline, high proline content, allowing flexibility. Now, flexibility lets the two antigen binding sites to operate independently. So, when you say independently, let's say yung nasa left na Fab region, gustong pumunta ng baba, it would, it would move sideways to the left, while the fab region naman to the right would move sideways to the left also. So, pwedeng, pwedeng ganun yung movement nila. It allows the two binding sites to operate independently. Now, flexibility would also assist in effector functions, initiation of complement, cascade, and binding to cells with specific receptors at FC portion. So, do you take note of the functions of the flexibility of the hinge region? Plaza? It allows the two binding sites to operate independently, assist in effector function, initiation of complement, binding to cells with specific receptors at the FC portion. Now, this is the 3D structure of your immunoglobulin. So, ito yung, if you view this on a 3D or an, pwede rin, by an EM, electron microscope. So, ito yung FC region, ito yung FAV region. So, they would have, if you notice, iba yung structure nila, na usually Y talaga yung dapat. But, and then if you take a look, class, meron din siyang mga receptors. So CDR1, CDR2, CDR3. They would be found in different uh, fab fragments. Your paratope, also known as your fab. Let's go to the classes of your immunoglobulins. Class. So as mentioned earlier, there are five classes. Let's talk about the first one, yung pinaka adami class, your IgG. Now, this is the predominant immunoglob immunoglobulin, 70% to 75% of total serum immunoglobulin. It has the longest half-life, approximately 23 days. It has four subclasses, IgG1, IgG2, 3, and 4. So let me repeat, IgG is the most predominant, 70, pinakamadami siya class, most abundant, predominant, 70 to 75% of serum immunoglobulin. Siya rin yung may pinakalongest half-life, 23 days. Four subclasses, IgG1, the most abundant, 66%, IgG2, 23%, IgG3, 7%, and IgG4, 4%. Functions class, provide immunity for the newborn because IgG is the only antibody class that can cross the placenta 
except IgG2. So to remember that class of CE, IgG nyo is capable of transplacental <coughs> transplacental movement. Except except the subclass IgG2. So IgG1, 3, and 4 are capable of transplacental movement. They also have the function of fixing complement. So if naalala mo, di ba, class, kasali siya along with IgM to activate the classical pathway. Coating antigen for enhanced phagocytosis through opsonization, neutralizing toxins and viruses, and participating in agglutination and precipitation. Reactions. Do remember. Now, the subclasses. Let's talk about the subclasses class. So, IgG3 has the largest hinge region. So, ang laki ng hinge region niya. Yeah, yun ang hinge region. And the largest number of interchain disulfide bonds. So, yeah. Daming interchain. Therefore, it is the most efficient at binding complement, followed by IgG1. Naalala niyo yung class, yung pag-bind niya sa complement, yung 3, 1, 2, 4. IgG2 and IgG4 would have a shorter hinge segments, which tend to make them poor mediators of complement activation. Kaya nga ang arrangement niyan, yung pinaka-effective when it comes to complement activation, specifically the classical pathway, the classical pathway would be 3 as the most effective, followed by 1, 2, and the least would be 4. And all subclasses can cross the placenta except IgG. So, kapag tinanong kayo, class, when it comes to the potency of immunoglobulins in activating the classical pathway, yung pinaka most potent would be IgM, followed by 3, 1, 2, and 4. So, kung kasama sa choices si IgM, class, si IgM ang una, followed by 3, 1, 2, and 4. And all subclasses can cross the placenta except IgG2. Let's go to the second one, yung IgM nyo. IgM is known as a macroglobulin. It has a half-life of 6 days. So kung si IgG, ang half-life ni IgG nyo is 23 days. Si IgM is 6 days. This is 5% and 10% of all serum immunoglobulins. They have five monomeric units and are held together by a J or joining chain, which is a glycoprotein made in the plasma cells that would contain several cysteine residues. So, ang nag held together sa kanila class. Take note that this is a macroglobulin, a very large type of antibody. They are held together by a J chain that contains 16 residues. This is the primary antibody response class. Primary response antibody. Synthesized as long as the antigen would remain present. Used to diagnose acute infections. So primary response antibody class. Pag sinabi mong primary res response antibody, um, this is the antibody produced. Antibody produced at the start of an infection. So, kapag nagkaroon ka ng infection, this is the first type of antibody produced. That is why it is used to diagnose acute infections. Functions in the class is complement fixation agglutination, opsonization, toxin neutralization, and most efficient in activating 
the complement system. So, siya yung pinaka-most efficient na sa IgM3124. Okay, let's continue with the third type of uh, immunoglobulin class, your IgA. Now, this would represent 10% to 15% of all circulating immunoglobulin. So, when you say all circulating class, this would include also the body fluids, not just those found in the plasma. So, there are two subclasses. The first one would be your IgA1 and IgA2. Now, the major role of your IgA is the inflammatory agent. So, they are increased class in inflammations. Now, IgA1 is found in your serum. IgA2 is found in secretions and mucosal surfaces. Now, IgA class is found as a dimer along the respiratory, urogenital, and intestinal mucosa. It also appears in the breast milk colostrum, saliva, tears, and your sweat. Now, they would consist of two numbers class. So, take a look at this picture. Itong, itong antibody na to, this is considered as a single monomer. Now, they are composed of two. Dalawa sila na monomer class. So, they are, and they are held together by a J chain. So, dito, Meron ditong J chain. And the J chain would hold them together. It has a molecular weight of 15,000 pounds. J chain is essential for the polymerization and secretion of your IgA. Now, secretory IgA synthesized in plasma cells found mainly in mouth or your mucosal associated lymphoid tissue and is released in the dimeric form. Okay, so if you still remember in your module 3, di ba when your uh, plasma cell would go to the mucosal surfaces, you know, it would become an IgA. So ito yung plasma cell nyo. IgA, it would go to the mucosal surface. Specifically, sa mucosal surface, it would go to the epithelial cell. So once it reaches the epithelial cell, it would attach class. Mag-a-attach yan doon sa polyimmunoglobulin receptor ng epithelial cell. Let me repeat, it will attach once it reaches the mucosal surface. It will attach to the polyimmunoglobulin receptor where it would be endocytose. When you say endocytosis, it would engulf it. It would engulf it to enter inside. And it would slowly transfer glass transfer to transcytosis and it would be um, removed via exocytosis. Now, kapag na-remove na siya, it would now be an immunoglobulin A plus the secretory component. Please take note of that. Now, it would now become a secretory IgA. Now, ano mo itong secretory IgA na to class? The function of your secretory IgA is to patrol the mucosal surfaces and would act as a first line of defense. It would neutralize toxins produced by microorganisms and would help prevent bacterial and viral adherence to mucosal surfaces. Okay, balik ako dito. Itong IgA nyo na to, this is known class as your... IgA1. Now, kapag nag-enter na siya, na, na, nag na siya dun sa epithelial cell with the secretory component, it becomes your IgA2. So, your IgA2 is also known as your secretory IgA. Ito yung function niya, class. Ha? Neutralizes toxins produced by microorganisms, prevent bacterial and viral adherence to mucosal surface, patrol the mucosal surface, and acts as a first line of defense. So, ito yung monomer. Diba? Dimer sila. This is another monomer. At the middle, you would find the so-called J-chain. Yang J-chain na yan would at hold together, would hold the two monomers forming IgA as a dimer. 
So do remember that class. The fourth one is your IgD or your immunoglobulin delta. This is less than 0.001% of total immunoglobulins. Half-life is only 1 to 3 days. And most of the IgD is found on the surface of immunocompetent but unstimulated B lymphocyte. Now, when you say immunocompetent class, they are mature. But sabi dito, they are unstimulated, meaning they are naive or inactivated. Please remember that. Kapag immunocompetent, we're talking about one a, a lymphocyte, a B cell that is mature. Meaning class anytime, kaya niyang maging activated. But unstimulated is naive or inactivated. So IgD is found in the surface of mature inactivated B cells. This is the second type of immunoglobulin to appear and may play a role in B cell activation, maturation, and differentiation. Because of its unusually long hinge region, IgD is more susceptible to proteolysis than other immunoglobulin. So do remember that class they are susceptible to proteolysis. And the last one is your IgE. This is the least abundant class. Pinaka onte siya, accounting for 0.0005% of total serum immunoglobulin. Has the ability to activate your mast cells and basophil. It, at it attaches to basophils, Langerhans cells, eosinophils, and tissue mast cells. By means of specific surface receptor term, your FC RI receptor. So, mag attach sa class dito sa surface receptor na tong FC RI receptor. Now, when two adjacent IgE molecules on a mast cell bind specific antigen, a cascade of cellular events is initiated that results in the degranulation of mast cell with the release of vasoactive amines such as histamine and Heparin. So, ganito yung class. Kung nari, ito yung ito yung mast cell nyo. Kung merong dalawang IgE na nag-attach dyan, di ba ang basophil nyo? Ang mast cells nyo is basophils in tissue. Di ba may mga granules yan? Yung mga granules na yan class would be, uh, would, would cause the secretion. Magsisikrit yan ng secret siya ng um, histamine and heparin. Diba ang histamine nyo is for vasodilation? Si heparin class, this is the natural anticoagulant. This is involved in type 1 hypersensitivity. Do take note of that. So this is the summary class. So I won't tackle them, but I do need you to memorize certain parts. Ito, para specific tayo. Memorize the molecular weight. Sediment of coefficient class, I need you to memorize this kasi lumalabas to sa boards. Lumalabas to sa boards. Do take note of that. Half-life also memorize. Huwag uh, na concentration. But you, you have already have an idea that the most abundant naman dito is IgG. Percentage, memorize ulit. Yeah, just just try to memorize most of them, class. Especially this one. All of them, all of them cannot cross the placenta except your IgG. Ang kaya ng complement fixation is IgG except for IgG4 and IgM. So do try to memorize them. Okay. Let's go to your immunoglobulin synthesis class. So, dito siya. Um, this is your immunoglobulin synthesis. I like the picture. Okay. This is your immunoglobulin synthesis class. So, from the uh, bone marrow, the bone marrow class, it would become a stem cell. So, itong stem cell na to, during the stem cell stage, um, there would be no immunoglobulin production. So, wala pang antibody production. So, take note of this. Ha? Merong stage of maturation, merong pattern of immunoglobulin. 
So the first one is that it would be a stem cell in the bone marrow, no immunoglobulin production. After that, it would now become a pre-B cell. Kapag naging pre-B cell sa class, there would be cytoplasmic mu heavy chain and pre-B receptor. So magkakaroon ng cytoplasmic mu heavy chain. When you say cytoplasmic class, it's a cytoplasm. Sa cytoplasm ng pre-B cell nyo, there would be a mu heavy chain. So ito, ayan, ayan, ayan. Yan yung mu heavy chain na yan. Tapos magkakaroon sila ng B receptor. Pre-B receptor. So itong nandito sa cytoplasm, yan yung uh, mu heavy chain. After the pre-B cell class, it would now become an immature B cell. Sa immature B cell, there would be membrane IgM. Now ito siya. This would be found on the cell membrane. So cell membrane dito sa wall there would be membrane IgM. After the immature B cell, it would now become a mature B cell where it would have membrane IgM and IgD. After becoming a mature B cell, it would become activated B cell. So there would now be a low rate of immunoglobulin secretion. So nagsisecrete na siya ng antibodies, pero low rate lang. Then there is the start of heavy chain isotype switching. Pag sinabi mong heavy chain iso isotype switching, yan na yung mga five classes niya. Nag-change nag na yung heavy chain niya class into five classes. So, pwede siyang IgM, IgA, IgD, IgE, or IgG. Then, affinity maturation. After that, it would now become an antibody secreting cell or the plasma cell. High rate of IgM, IgG, A, or IgE secretion and reduce membrane immunoglobulin. So, pansin nyo kasi, so, nag-i-start talaga siya sa cytoplasm, tapos lalabas siya sa, sa membrane, yung pag-create ng mga antibodies. So, do try to uh, try to understand their pattern class. Let's go to the antibody diversity. So, here class, we have the so-called Ehrlich side chain theory. This was formulated by Paul Ehrlich in the 1990s. Sabi dito class, certain cells had specific surface receptor for antigen that were present already before contact with antigen occur. That is why once antigen is introduced, it would select the cell with proper receptor. So sabi dyan class, meron dong mga cells. Merong mga cells na meron na silang specific receptors for antigen. Bago pa nila may encounter yung antigen. And there have uh, two premises or that will emerge. Yung tinatawag nilang lock and key concept of the fit of antibody for antigen and the antigen selected cells with built-in capacity to respond to it. So two key, key premises emerge, yung lock and key concept of the fit of antibody for antigen and antigen selected cells within with the built-in capacity to respond to it. Then meron na namang isang theory yung clonal selection hypothesis. This was uh, created by Niels Jern and McFarland Vernay in the 1950s. Individual lymphocytes are genetically pre-programmed though class. They are genetically pre-programmed to produce one type of immunoglobulin that a specific antigen finds or selects. Those cells are capable of responding to it, causing them to proliferate. So, sabi dito class yung mga lymphocytes daw. Pre-program na daw sila na mag-create ng immunoglobulin to a specific, meaning isa lang class, antigen. And pag nahanap nila yung antigen na yun, they would select it and they would respond to it, causing them to proliferate or dadami yung immunoglobulins. Then we have your antibody versus antibody affinity versus avidity. Kapag affinity class, this would refer to univalent antigen. Pag sinabi mong univalent class, this has a single epitope. So kunwari ito yung antigen mo, sa surface niyan, isa lang yung determinant site or epitope, plus a single FAP site. So, tingnan nyo to. This is an example of a univalent antigen. Isa lang yung 
it only has a one or a single epitope. Then you introduce your antibody and it would form the attachment. So, ganun yung affinity nyo. Applicable din siya sa HAP10 class. Diba ang HAP10 nyo? For it to attach to the antibody, kailangan ng carrier. So, HAP10 plus carrier molecule, HAP10 carrier molecule, plus the antibody could form your affinity. Pag avidity naman, multivalent antigen. Pag sinabi mong multivalent antigen, multiple epitope. Plus multivalent antibody. Isa lang naman ng multivalent antibody natin. That's IgM lang yan. So, ito yung multivalent antigen plus the multivalent antibody to form this attraction. Immune complexes class is a combination of antigen with specific antibody. So, pakitandaan class ha. Pag sinabi mong immune complex, simplify yan antibody-antigen interaction or combination. Maybe small immune complexes, soluble. Maybe large immune complexes, precipitating. Hybridomas naman class is the fusion of an activated B cell with a myeloma cell. Particular cell line of myeloma cell that is not capable of producing antibody is chosen. The cell line has HGPRT deficiency capable of uh, capable to synthesize nucleot nucleotides class pag sinabi mong myeloma cell this is also known as your plasma cells so dito gagamit ka ng activated b cell plus myeloma cell ang pipiliin mong myeloma cell dito or plasma cell is the one not capable of producing antibody and for that to happen, pipiliin mo yung merong HGPRT deficiency. Kapag merong kang HGPRT deficiency, not capable, not capable of creating uh, antibodies. Pag sinabi mong HGPRT class, this would refer to hyposantin. Hyposantin, guanine, phospho, phosphoribosyl, transferase. So let me repeat. HGRPT would refer to your hyposantin, guanine, phosphoribosyl, transferase. Incapable to synthesize nucleotides. So, ulitin ko klasa, ang hybridoma nyo is a fusion of activated B cell with a myeloma cell or plasma cell. Myeloma cells class are plasma cells. Ha? Yung pipiliin nyo dito is yung the one not capable of producing antibody. And they are usually HGPRT deficient. Incapable to synthesize nucleotides. So, ito yung uh, process nyo class. Um, it, would, it would begin by choosing your... Uh, it would begin by choosing your type of antigen. Alimbawa, ang gusto mong antigen is salmonella. So, you would get the antigen and you would introduce it to the uh, you would introduce it to the mouse. After that, you wait for a few days may immunize yung may immunize yung uh, yung daga. When you say immunize, may introduce sa body yung antigen. And it would now start having um, activated immune cells. So, kapag may activated immune cells ka na, gagawin mo na next, kukunin mo yung, you're going to harvest the spleen cells. After harvest mo na yung spleen cells, you get your myeloma cells, yung the one not capable of producing antibodies. You fuse them in polyethylene glycol. Polyethylene glycol. Then you place them in hot restricted media. Pag sinabi mong hot, yan, yung, yan din yung hyposantin. Hyposantin 
try me din. Medium. So you put it into hat. Then it would uh, it would form three things. Three things could happen. Hybridoma cells will grow. Spleen cells would die. Or myeloma cells will die. So if successful yung fusion nyo, if the fusion is successful, hybridoma cells will grow and you would form your desired antibody secretion. So ulitin ko klasa for you to understand more. So you would choose your antigen. Let's say ang gusto mong antigen, COVID. You, you introduce it to the mouse and you would immunize the mouse. So may introduce mo, magkakaroon ng activated immune cell siya. You harvest the, immune, the mouse spleen cell, then you use your cultured myeloma cell. You fuse them in the presence of polyethylene glycol, then you place them in your hyposantine thymidine media, restrictive media. Three things will happen. Myeloma cells will die, spleen cells will die, or hybridoma cells will grow. And if hybridoma cells are, would grow, successful yung fusion, and the desired antibody is secret. So, ano yung uses, ni uses nitong monoclonal antibodies na to? Identifying and quantifying hormone, typing tissue and blood, identifying infectious agents, identifying clusters of differentiation for the classification of leukemia, and lymphomas, and follow-up therapy. Identifying tumor antigens and autoantibodies, and delivering immunotherapy. So, that ends your module 6.